know as a butcher for 21 years. That's how I'm able to do this. What are we doing here? We're actually straightening up the edge of the knife. Now, see, there's no, like if you get a steak knife, um, there'll be like little ridges on it. <clears throat> what happens with this is, is that uh, we use a stone to sharpen it, and then the steel here helps to take off any burrs off the edge. And it helps to, it won't sharpen your knife, it just keeps your blade, um, I guess you'd say sharper a little bit longer. So that's all. So I'm gonna make, soak the beet greens in some cold water for a few minutes to take off some of the dirt and stuff like that. All the, all the dirty stuff. Where are these from? These actually, these are organic from Sprouts. Didn't make it to the farmer's market. Just got in from LA last night, Sunday. So, um, I'm just gonna cut that thing out there. Set this aside. So, always curl your fingers when you're cutting. As we used to say as a, when I was a butcher, it's always better to cut off a knuckle than it is a whole finger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Set those aside to rinse them. Cutting the beet greens. Cutting the beet greens. Just, just going to soak them for a few minutes in cold water. Then I'm going to take them out. Then I'm going to dice them smaller so I could saute them with some pine nuts. So I guess I should say the reason why we're doing this dish today is because we're in the summer month right now. And actually in the summer months, zucchini are in season, Asian pears are in season, um, also bell peppers are in season. So in general, they're cooling in nature. Beets are in season, beet greens. So the energetic properties of these vegetables are, um, and the fruit, also the Asian pears, is that they are cooling in nature. And one of the common threads with almost all of these is that it helps to detoxify the liver Get it so it helps to lubricate your intestines uh, some of these things we're going to be using pine nuts as well too and uh, pine nuts help to move cheese we're going to be um, sauteing those as well so if you pay attention what i'm doing here today is i'm actually putting things together that are already in season and you know the difference between chinese nutrition and uh, western nutrition is that we look at the energetic properties of food and what is its function you know what organs does it um, involve etc so right now, the summer heat, and actually here in LA, it's pretty warm here today. I'd say it's about 100 degrees. Oh, I don't know if it's, I know it's very humid also. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna, like, once again, just curl those. Oops. I feel like Julia Childs. Let those soak for a few minutes. So I'm going to be sauteing these actually. I'm be stuffing them. So these are so good for you. That's what's cool about eating beets is that you could eat the greens as well too. So kind of bitter. So it helps to cure the heart. So the energy of the heart, the foods of the heart, is bitter. So uh, Emily here, by the way, so take a little flash on it, onto Emily, Emily, take <laughs> she's a singer songwriter and uh, she's helping us out putting together these little videos to help educate people on the energetic properties of food and healthy eating. Because actually I'm making this up as I go along. Oh. Yeah. So it's not, uh, it's not something I've done before. We just got that big zucchini. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I must do something with it. So we're going to put in the... Uh, the pears last. Like I said, I was really hoping to get uh, the Asian pears because they are in season, or they should be in season, but they didn't have any. So I'm going to put those in last when we go to saute. Do you want a cutting board? No, it's okay. I'll just do it here. Oops. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Look at that zucchini. That's gonna make some major zucchini bread. So I'm only gonna do, I think, a portion of this. I 
And then we're just gonna scoop out that inside. Then we're gonna crush up some garlic too. We're gonna saute some garlic and some pine nuts together. I might put some uh, saltless uh, uh, sesame seeds, not sesame seeds, but saltless um, sunflower seeds. <laughs> so, one of those seeds. One of those seeds, those <laughs> silly little things. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of ghee because I'm gonna start to brown everything here. So what's so good about ghee? Ooh, ghee. For those of you that don't, that don't know what ghee is, ghee is clarified butter, and basically they take out all the junk and leave all the only the good stuff, which is the healthy fats. And the, you know these healthy fats are so good for your brain, for your uh, for your heart, and it's something that we need. And actually, you know, there's uh, several years ago. They were, uh, if you had heart disease, they actually would recommend, doctors at the time would recommend that you stay away from healthy fats, all fats. And there's actually in 2014, there was a doctor, by a heart surgeon by the name of Dr. Dwight Lundell, and he wrote articles on the three things that were causing people to die uh, from you know, these heart conditions. And number one was the statins that they're putting people on, that was number one. Uh, number two was taking them off the healthy fats. So these healthy fats in moderation also are very good. And so uh, we cook with ghee a lot of times, also coconut oil. I always start off my mornings, every single morning with a four ounce glass of hot water and uh, a full lemon or lime, and then about a teaspoon of coconut oil. Again, to, um, uh, well, number one, for the, have the healthy fats, you know, for brain health, et cetera, but also for cholesterol health too, because did you know that coconut oil helps to break down cholesterol in the body. And it's not only cholesterol inside the artery walls, but it's also like gallstones and kidney stones are also forms of cholesterol as well too. So yeah, this is good stuff to have. Melting that ghee. You wanna melt that ghee? Got some garlic here. <clears throat> So right now I'm boiling the beets. I'm gonna take the skin off of here in a little bit, and then I'm gonna chop them up into fine little slices. I'm gonna mix it with everything else. How long do you boil them? Well, for about 45 minutes. And uh, you know, beets uh, are really good for you, really good for your cardiovascular system. Did you know that it also help? It also, or beets also have what is called as nitric oxide, which are, is really good for your blood. So it helps to put oxygen in your blood. So if you're a runner, an athlete, then it's something good. They actually sell nitric oxide products that you could actually put in your water or whatnot. In fact, Pure Encapsulations, who we carry, has a really great nitric oxide product that you put into your water and drink before a workout or after a workout. Um, but if you want the natural source, then you go ahead and go with beets. Another thing that's very good too that I really love for putting oxygen in your blood is chlorophyll. So this helps to gently cleanse the liver as well too, just like the beets do, especially the beet greens, but also helps to put oxygen inside your blood as well. So, you know, the more that we're able to... Uh, what brand is this? So this this one here, you know, I don't know this one, honestly. This is not this is something I get at Whole Foods or at... Uh, uh, they get at Whole Foods or you go ahead and get at Sprouts. And chlorophyll, For if you don't know what chlorophyll is, chlorophyll is what's found in green, pl green plants. So this is actually green. And when you put it in, into your water, and it's probably TMI, but you have a bowel movement and it turns green, that's the reason why. Okay, so it's not that you're having gallstone issues or gallbladder issues, it's because of the chlorophyll. Cool. Okay, so I'm using, uh, I'm starting to uh, uh, brown the uh, pine nuts right now. Like I said, uh, pine nuts are so good for your immune system, immune health. So I'm just kind of bringing those alive. These are saltless sunflower seeds. Uh, these are great antioxidants or, and also anti-inflammatory. So when people are talking about turmeric and cayenne peppers being good for anti-inflammatories, there's actually, like if you have arthritis and such, then eating saltless sunflower seeds are also really good for you as well too. So I'm gonna put those aside. And uh, no, normally I just go ahead and chop these with a knife, but I figure I'd try this thing out. I haven't used this yet, I don't think so. Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and... and put that in there. It takes off the skin too. Let's do a couple more uh -huh. cloves there. I need some strong hands for this. <laughs> well, being a butcher, grabbing all those. I usually knife off the end. So, so I'm gonna come here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so just a little bit of garlic also. This is also good for immune health too, especially right now with things that are going on. So 
The more you eat and season, oh, there we go. These are gonna turn nice around the ghee. But what's gonna be nice about the ghee also is gonna add a good flavor in with the uh, beet greens as well. So just stirring that in there. I'll turn down the heat just a little bit. These pine nuts are turning darker, quicker than I want them to. Remember those movie theaters that they were trying out for a while where like they'd have different smells or something to come out from underneath the seats? Oh my Did gosh. you know about those? No. They had those in the Bay Area. Did they have them down here? I don't think so. Maybe. Kind of reminds me of back in the day of the Rocky Horror Picture Show when they mm -hmm. let people come out and... Yeah. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in the greens now actually. And uh, I'm going to begin just kind of mixing this all in here. That's not delicious. That's delicious, right? And I haven't even added any seasonings yet. So slide those in. Now my beets are almost done too, so this is not going to take too long. So there's that color. Now different colors, just for those of you that are interested in eating the season. So we have the five elements of the body which are the five organs and did you know that there's a certain color associated with each of the elements so red is associated with the heart green is associated with the liver orange or yellow is associated with the spleen and the pancreas and the stomach white is associated uh, with the uh, lungs and blue or black is associated with the kidney so if you eat foods of those colors then you actually are helping to benefit those specific internal organs now the cool thing about bell peppers coming into the season right now, and if, coming back to the very beginning of this video, I was talking about how bell peppers are cooling in nature. Uh, uh, well, actually the bell pepper itself is actually a little bit warming in nature and it's sweet. And that sweet flavor actually helps to build up the spleen. Now as we're in August right now, we're going to be transitioning into the Indian summer months where the spleen and the pancreas becomes more prone to disease. So you're going to start to see more squashes coming into play. Like right now in August, uh, potatoes are also coming into season as well. Okay, so this is, this is not by accident. God, the universe, the Tao, whatever you want to call it, wise enough to know that these different organs have cycles. Now we have daily cycles, but also we have yearly cycles as well too. So if you start to prep your spleen and your pancreas, in the Indian summer months by eating pumpkin. Now, pumpkin is, you see, people are normally around Halloween carving funny faces on it or whatnot, and that's really groovy. But, you know, eating pumpkin, making pumpkin soup is so good for you. So if you eat things that are in season, especially to benefit that stomach and spleen right now when we're talking about immune health, well, guess what? Your spleen plays a big role in that. So then it rolls into the lungs because during the autumn months, and guess what? The lungs are most prone to disease. So if you pay attention to what's in your farmer's market and as you're cooking, being wise about what it is that you're cooking and not just cooking oh, just because, oh, I'm going to just eat this food, but knowing the food is medicine, not just food. So we're going to be taking those beets out. I'm going to peel and cut those. I don't know if you can see those. Okay, but I'm going to add a little bit of Himalayan sea salt for flavor here. Now obviously, if you have hypertension, you're going to want to pay attention to that. Uh, these black sesame seeds also good antioxidant, also good for anti-inflammatory. I like to put a little bit more of them. Get this thing. There we go. A little black sesame seed. Okay, and then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put in some turmeric. So these are all the things. So like in the morning, I eat egg whites every single morning and uh, I always put in turmeric and I always put in cayenne pepper and if I know I have something going on with my lungs, the color white, so I put in like dried onions in there. Oops, I don't want that much cayenne. <laughs> I just realized what I did, like no thank you. Thank you, but no thank you. So the voice is telling me, well I want to detoxify that liver, so I'm going to add some. A little bit of rice vinegar. This is good for detox. Ooh, detoxification. The, yeah. the liver. Yep. Okay. So again, these beet greens are really good for that as well too. So then I'm going to go ahead and I've take, now I've taken this off the flame. I'm going to, I'm going to brown this more here in a little bit because I want to get these beets in there as well too. So these are the pears. Mixing those pears in there. 
Okay. And you've taken this off the flame, correct? I've taken it off the flame for right now. So I'm just gonna kind of mix that in there, but uh, I'm gonna turn it back on here in a few minutes once I get these beets in here, because the beets are done. So I don't want to overcook, overcook the greens. How do you know when the beets are done? Oh, uh, you know the beets are done when you could just when you put a fork in it. See how oh, easy. Yeah. Off Taking the off the here. skin, okay. So also another note to self: if you're eating these beets, when you stick these beets in there and you go to the bathroom the next day and it's kind of red, that's the reason why. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. <laughs> so, how many clients I have that freak out? They say, Chris, I ate all those beets and went to the bathroom and the water was all red. Well, that was the reason why. So, yeah, so I'm just taking off that skin there. And you see how it just rubs off? I'm just using my hand just to rub it off. Yeah. So, I'm just going to... Caliente. I'm just going to kind of just chop these up a little bit because I'm going to stuff them all together. So, you know, whatever we can stuff into the zucchini, what's great about this little concoction that we're making is that you could put this over basmati rice, you could put Ooh. over uh, quinoa. Nice. And um, delicious. Yeah. You're not a butcher of meat, but. <laughs> not no more. <laughs> butcher of vegetables, still yeah. bleeding. <laughs> still bleeding, right? <laughs> still reminds me back in the day. It's like, energetically, why did you get out of being a butcher? Hmm, I wonder. Yeah. Cutting up dead cows all day, not so cool. But the cool thing about being a butcher that I never knew, because I never thought I was going to become a healer, but um, the cool thing about it is that the an anatomy of the animals is not much different than the human. So when I touch somebody, because I'm very hands-on with my patients in clinic, um, I'm actually, I can actually visualize the fascia, I, all the insertion points, I know what the... Fascia smells like, tastes like, what it looks like is if there's disease or if there's cancer inside the muscle or whatnot. Mm. Um, because you, you know you actually see all that kind of stuff wow. when you're a butcher. So yeah, quite a bit here. So like I said, so look at all these colors. Oh my gosh, so we have Rainbow. yes, and so we're hitting all the internal organs of the body. So. So pretty. So, <clears throat> one, I love animated cartoons. And one of my favorite animated cartoons is uh, Finding Nemo. Oh, yay. <laughs> and one of my favorite parts is when the sharks are in recovery from eating fish. And then they sit there, uh, what is it? Fish say? are friends, not food. Yeah, fish are friends, not food. <laughs> You remember that? That's yeah, so cool. Yeah, of fish are friends, not food. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, <clears throat> food is medicine, not just food. Yes, true. Do, I wonder if I should do the other half because what I'm thinking about doing, because as I'm cooking, like, because I love flavor. You know, food doesn't have to be boring. You can eat healthy and have it taste really good. So we have the rice vinegar in there already, so it's going to give a little, a little punch, you know, punch to it. But I'm thinking about adding some kind of like. Uh, um, like dressing, like vegan, I think I have some vegan like dressing, like cream dressing, we'll have to see. Anyways, um, and uh, add that into part of the batch and cream it up a little bit. Ooh, so try both, both styles, yeah. So the thing about cooking is just like being an artist is all about expression. And um, originally when I went into making this dish, I was not uh, planning on adding black sesame seeds or rice vinegar in there. So you see, as I went along, it's like my, because I like to cook a lot, it's like, okay, what else will help to enhance the flavor of this meal and at the same time, too, uh, still be beneficial for health? So always play around with your food. Not <laughs> like this, but, or like as a kid, you know, but, but play around with different flavors and tastes and see what you come up with. Don't just stick with the same things. And you'd be surprised by mixing things how things come out. Excited because we have so much of the stuffing that I'm going to go ahead and I did the whole zucchini, the whole enchilada. <laughs> so, so some of these now the beets have overran everything, so those hairs now are turning red. And you can still make this in a smaller version since totally. people won't have this zucchini, right? This is a massive zucchini. <laughs> totally lucked out.
Yeah, what are we so. putting on top? Okay, so I'm using this uh, roasted garlic. Garlic. <laughs> Anyways, I'm using this uh, roasted garlic Caesar salad dressing, and um, so it's not vegan, but um, I'm gonna on one of these here. We're gonna try it out. We're gonna put it over the top, and watch. It's, it's gonna taste delicious. <laughs> now you you could use something else as vegan if you want to, because they have all kinds of different uh, dressings out there nowadays. But uh, but I just want to add a little bit of kick to one of these just to see what happens. And the worst thing, you know, if it ruins it, we could always feed it to the dog. <laughs> so if you think about it, this is kind of like a salad, right? A so hot salad. Yeah, a hot salad. This is what we normally recommend anyways is a warm salad as opposed to uh, a raw salad, especially for people with weakened immune systems. And pop those bad boys in. What is the oven set to? Um, I have it at 350, but I think I'm gonna move it up to 375. And then I'm gonna. How's that? What do you think about oh this? Oh my god, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're putting it in for how long? I'm gonna do like uh, 35 to 40 minutes, and then we'll test it. As long as I can stick the fork into the zucchini and it goes in easily, then we know it's done. Okay. Here we go. Wowzies. So I think I'm going to take off the two smaller ones because they're they're not as thick and um, let these other uh, the bigger ones cook a little bit longer. But there you go. There's your stuffed zucchini. The, the dressing actually kind of looks like melted cheese there. <laughs> Beautiful. All the colors of the rainbow. So I'm Chris Shelton. Thank you once again. And please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, you know, follow the recipe below. It doesn't have to be exact. As you see, I just kind of sprinkle a little bit of this. I go by feel, I go by taste, and you can always add more of something, you can always add less of something, and you can always add other things. Like, you can add shiitake mushrooms to this, for example, since a lot of this that we're cooking here today is good for liver health and digestion. So you can add whatever you want to add. And again, eat healthy. Practice Qigong and make sure you get plenty of sleep. And I'm Chris Shelton signing off from a beautiful day in Los Angeles, California. Until next time, I will chi you later.